sorry got carried away all of this satanic energy because metal is satanic right well i guess we've got to find out Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Angela Puca and welcome to my symposium. I'm a PhD and a university lecturer and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic, paganism, shamanism and all things occult. Before we start, I'd like to dedicate this video to the longtime supporter of this project and dear friend Dave. Hey up mate, hope you enjoy it. In this episode, we will explore the alleged satanic elements in rock and heavy metal music based on a book chapter authored by Kenneth Granol and published in Hermes Explains by Amsterdam University Press. To start the conversation, Granholm explains that there isn't much in terms of Satanism in the narrow sense in heavy metal. What you can find would be better described as themes related to Satan, demons and the occult more generally. Still, heavy metal is often perceived as inherently satanic, often accused as such in its entirety, meaning that everything associated with it, artists, fans, and the scene more generally, is satanic, or somewhat linked to the devil and the occult. In total disregard of the diversities present within the genre, as well as the other subgenres. This has occurred since metal emerged in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Interestingly, its precursors, blues and rock, were similarly perceived as being devil's music, facing analogous allegations of engaging with the immoral, the satanic and the occult earlier in the 20th century. For instance, there were speculations of a Faustian pact with the devil to explain the extraordinary talent of blues artist Robert Johnson, as well as his untimely death. Based on the interpretation that Crossroads Blues was about making a pact with the devil. That said, the blues legend was indeed fascinated by the occult, as shown by songs such as Hellhound of My Trail and Me and the Devil Blues. Speaking of heavy metal, Black Sabbath is often seen as the first heavy metal band and openly included satanic and dark occult themes starting with its very name and continuing with the songs, uh, lyrics and imaginary. On his debut solo album, Blizzards of Oz, lead singer Ozzy Osbourne included the song Mr. Crowley, named after Aleister Crowley. Led Zeppelin is another band often deemed as the first one in the heavy metal genre and similarly mentions Crowley in a number of songs. Indeed, it seems that guitar player Jimmy Page had been fascinated by the self-professed Great Beast 666 from an early age, so much so that he bought Crowley's old Boleskine house on the shore of Loch Ness in Scotland. We find recurring occult themes in the music of later bands. I'll name a few influential works as a reference. Running with the Devil by Van Halen, ACDC's album and title track Highway to Hell, Iron Maiden's album and title track Number of the Beast, glam metal band Motley Crue's album and title track Shout at the Devil, and Christian metal band Striper's album and title track The Hell with the Devil. And let's not forget the glorious Beelzebos by Tenacious D. Interesting to notice that, apart from Jimmy Page, the aforementioned artists were not particularly interested or involved in the study or practice of esotericism. The use of certain occult symbolism is more allegorical and is articulated differently by different artists. Van Halen's Running with the Devil tells the story of an outsider who leads a lawless and destructive life. ACDC's Highway to Hell is similarly about living outside societal conventions, yet here a voluntary choice of parting and disregarding consequences in the pursuit of a rockstar lifestyle. 
Iron Maiden's The Number of the Beast is kind of a horror story, seeing someone who recalls almost in disbelief a somewhat satanic, demonic or pagan ritual along with sacrifice that he may or may not have witnessed. Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil describes an entity or force, possibly the devil, through a number of discomforting and enticing allegories, while Stripers to Hell with the Devil is a straightforward disparaging denouncement of the devil. As you may recall from a previous video, Satan has started to be seen as a romantic hero after the Enlightenment's progressive secularization and the later association with political uprisings. And it seems to me that across the satanic, demonic and occult themes employed in metal songs, there is an overarching connotation of rebellion and being at the edges of societal norms, which echoes that sentiment quite nicely. But why are Satan, demons, esoteric and occult topics so pervasive in heavy metal music? Granholm offers as a theoretical tool for understanding the matter the analytical distinction between rock and pop made by sociologist of music Simon Frith. Let's first premise that this distinction is not based on the music and how it sounds, but rather on the discursive elements underlying the lyrics and the narratives conveyed by said music. According to Frith, rock is centered around a yearning for authenticity and artistic integrity. Pop music, defined in contrast to rock instead of in, in its own right, is seen as its antithesis, as lacking depth of meaning and mainly interested in following popular trends and make a profit. Thus, if pop represents adherence to the status quo, rock embodies the rebellion against it. In an attempt to interpret this dichotomy in symbolic terms and in reference to most of Western culture, the dominant trend, what is deemed to be right and appropriate, could be symbolically linked to the Christian values, its concept of God, societal laws, rules of conduct and propriety. Basically, pop would be the musical embodiment of the idea of fitting in within a given community. Conversely, rock, here deemed as the precursor to metal, symbolically represents being your own free-thinking being, regardless or in deliberate opposition to the mainstream ideas. And who epitomizes such a rebellious nature better than the demonic entities Satan or the devil? The one who, in the popular understanding, dared to rebel against God? Equally, occult and supernatural themes, magic and esotericism, can all be perceived as expressing an allegorical connection with the unseen, the hidden, the arcane. They voice the sentiment of not being content with a shallow understanding or a standardized experience of the world, and a yearning for alternative avenues of knowledge and more profound exploration of human experience. To sum it up, in Granholm's words, while there certainly are heavy metal bands that project an overtly satanic image, and even some that can be directly linked to occult philosophies, practices and groups, they are the exception rather than the rule, exemplifying the discursive core of rock music as categorized by Simon Frith. The prominence of transgressive subject matter and portrayals in heavy metal represents a natural progression in the evolving pursuit of rebelliousness, authenticity and artistic integrity that distinguishes rock music. Even in the face of secularization, satanic subject matter holds sufficient power to cause outrage with the devil epitomizing freedom and independence in rebellion, and a refusal to submit to older generations, to establish society and to mainstream norms and values. This is it for today's video. This project can only exist thanks to your help. And so if you like my content and want me to keep the academic fun going, please consider supporting my work with a one-time PayPal donation by joining memberships or my inner symposium on Patreon, where you will get access to our Discord server, monthly lectures and lots of other perks depending on your chosen tier. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell so that you will always know when I upload a new video. And as always, stay tuned 
for all the academic fun. Bye for now.